Hey everybody, so taking a step back from the bench, what we've got right here right now is a whole lot of stuff lit and ready to be integrated into the hull. Uh, what we've got here is a lot of parts that are ready to be lit and fiber optic additionally and uh, they just need to be painted and a whole pile of other parts here aren't even barely primed yet and because of these parts those will need to be painted too everything's got to be painted so as such I'm gonna recover if I didn't uh, in the beginning of the series some basics on airbrushing if you want a really good thorough investigative uh, overview then look for SM Consortium on YouTube and uh, he's got a really great series there for my setup, I've got a basic tank, a fairly basic dual action brush, uh, and this is my paint box itself. It's the only thing I paid for was the fan and the window, basically. All the rest of it was just scrap wood I had laying around, and uh, I mangled that into one huge uh, modular cabinet, basically. So this is the main airbrushing area here. I would like to install some kind of uh, vent hood in this area here, but it's not going to work out yet. This is two bottoms of the Millennium Falcon model kit taped together for a little extra strength. That backside folds up and down for easy uh, access and put away. The fan is usually on. I should have some kind of filter for that. There are conjectures that some spray paint, because of the fumes and the volatility, could ignite on the fan's motor. But in three years it hasn't happened yet, so I'm not too worried about it. These boxes are definitely looking their age, and uh, before I do any major spray painting, I usually vacuum them out completely and uh, that's what I just spent half an hour doing. I probably should have got some of that on tape but all the buildup of the dust and the grime and everything it uh, just really needs to be cleaned out every now and then. So additionally to this I've got another small box that I'll be putting uh, pieces in for painting and a spray stray piece of cardboard here to uh, tape a few pieces to. You really should use gloves uh, I aim to every single time nowadays because I'm dealing with a lot of enamels. If you're dealing with uh, acrylics, don't worry about it. That's just basically water. So it's not really inherently toxic like enamels and uh, lacquers and all the other ones are. This kind of dust mask here will not protect you against fumes. It will keep a lot of bigger dust particles out of your... Uh, respiratory system but not the toxic fumes themselves you really got to go pro on that but what I'm doing here is just cranking up the fan on full right now it's on low which is usually the default I've got it kept at paints got them ready here got the airbrush ready uh, I'm just about all set to go so there's going to be a lot of different colors and masking for all these parts here I've been going through the directions the last hour or so and uh, just getting a feel for how I should go about painting what which color in order so it's definitely been a little bit of a trick and I've got some basic ideas down once I've got these going then I can actually get them onto the floor and start lighting stuff in a more permanent nature and I do have to give the floor another pass of color as well a little too uh, blotchy still at this point so uh, that's what's coming up airbrushing see ya alright so I'm at a point in construction where a lot of things are about to converge and one of the things that really needs to converge is the airbrushing on several key parts so, looking through the directions, a lot of the parts, they're at least two-tone, if not three-tone in a lot of cases, or in a few cases at least. So there is some masking to do, and the biggest decision there 
is deciding what color you want to deal with first. So uh, a few weeks ago when I first started painting this, I was doing this wall color. This piece needed that wall color at the bottom, so I painted it at the time. Now it's masked off for to get its second color, which is the green which goes across the top here and down this side. So once I get this mask off, then I can do the final third color and actually start putting the pieces together on this. And this will be a complete, all done, completely finished set. So I was doing a little airbrushing in the last few days. There's really nothing I can teach you on that. If you want a really good airbrushing series, go over to uh, SM Consortium's channel and look for one of his uh, airbrushing playlists. You'll definitely see some really good stuff there. I'm not doing anything magical with the airbrush here. I'll wind up going over the, all the parts to show you, but uh, I'm just using it in the most basic, simple configuration possible to get exactly what I need done. Jarred paint applied to the surface without any brush strokes. So I've done one coat on uh, all of these here, and I'll do a second coat on a few of them. And I've started to mask off all of these parts here. So on the walls, these are two-tone, and I figured it'd be easier to mask this inner area rather than trying to cut a mask for the outer area. So uh, what I have to do next on these is mask the inside and get some paint going there. What's another good piece to talk about? I suppose that's really it. No, there's one. So this piece here is in rough shape. I've got the LEDs taped off. There's about two of them. I'm not worried about this crease up on the top here because that's not really going to be visible once the floor is set in place. However, there's uh, some paint damage up here and I probably got a little too thick on that. And it's beaded up and really textured the surface a lot which is really unfortunate because uh, I don't want to go with that because that will show right through the airbrushing no matter how much more paint I pile on it and I don't want to risk the surface by sanding it and I think my only option right now is going to be to actually try and strip the paint off with uh, an overnight bath the only trouble is I gotta keep these LEDs dry so that's one I gotta check into and I'll definitely cover that when I do that one. The only other thing to talk about I guess right now is this floor. I kinda did this test spray a couple months ago at least at this point just to see how it was and I accidentally filled the uh, rim here so I had to scrape that out and to do that I just took the back side of a single edge razor blade and slowly ran it around and that helped to groove out the uh, groove. I gave the entire surface a really light sanding with uh, probably like 600 grit just to make sure there wasn't any dust on there and to get rid of any textures. So because I had to sand these two areas so strongly I lost the groove on the razor blade and dug into the paint so I had to strip those down completely. Because of these two sm smudges here I'm probably going to go totally black another layer of white and then do this proper color again. I don't have to paint this outer ring, this is going to go very dark brown and you can see that I do have the RGB flashers all taped off so no extra paint will get down there. So I've got to uh, base color this again, get masking on these other parts, uh, and I think that's pretty much it for overall coverage. Like I said, I'm not going to dwell on the airbrush too long. You do need a basic good setup. So this is a generic brush. It cost me like $40. It certainly paid for itself in the year or so that I've owned it. Uh, works just about every time I needed to, so I've never had any problems with it like that. If you've got a compressor, that is also a requirement, really, because you can't just go using a cans of air all the time. It's just a complete waste of money on your part. A dozen cans will basically pay for a cheap end uh, air compressor. You don't want to go with like a hardware store one from like Home Depot or something. You need a proper 
uh, small caliber compressor, but I'll talk about all that in one of the later videos. And uh, I think that's it for now.